Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll to ascertain the presence of a quorum? Certainly. Councilor Arroyo. Present. Councilor Baker. Here. Councilor Bach. Present. Councilor Braden. Present. Councilor Campbell. Present. Councilor Edwards. Councilor Edwards. Here. Councilor Asabi George. Present. Councilor Flaherty. Present. Councilor Flynn. Here. Councilor Janey. Present. Councilor Mejia. Here. Councilor O'Malley. Present. And Councilor Wu. Present. Madam President, we have all in attendance. Thank you so much. I've been informed by our clerk that a quorum is present. We'll begin our meeting as we always do with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Today, I am inviting uh, Councilor Flaherty up uh, to introduce our clergy. Councilor Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President and, and members of the council. Today, it's my privilege and honor, and I'm very happy to introduce Father Patrick Nolan to the Boston City Council. Father Nolan is currently at BC High, my alma mater, and we're having a great day today as, uh, as a, a classmate of my brother's, uh, class of 88, uh, and a friend of both uh, mine and Father Nolan, Serge Georges, is, is being confirmed uh, as uh, the next uh, justice uh, from the SJC in Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So great day to be an alum uh, from BC High. Uh, Father Nolan plays many roles at BC High. He's a valued member of the BC High community as well as the community at large. He's presently, presently teaching at the Rupe Division at the school. He's also chaplain to the athletics, member of the lacrosse uh, coaching staff in the enrollment team and is also presently serving as the vocations promoter for the USA Northeast province of the Jesuits. He also preaches and assists at uh, uh, celebrating masses uh, at the various parishes in South Boston. Prior to joining BC High and upon his uh, graduation from Loyola, he actually worked in the sports marketing industry before entering the, the novitia of Syracuse, New York uh, in his mid twenties. And in the beginning of his career, Father Nolan uh, taught religion at the local grammar school he also worked in jail ministry and also served as an orderly at a cancer hospital. Uh, Father Nolan uh, was, um, uh, is obviously is, remains to be a, a great asset for BCI, but also is a good friend of the Flaherty family. Uh, is truly a man uh, for and with others. I'm honored to have him here uh, as uh, my guest uh, to read uh, today's invocation and bring some words of wisdom. So with that, uh, Father Nolan, you have the floor. Welcome to the Boston City Council. I have to let my colleagues know in advance, uh, given your sports background, that he is a Yankees fan, he is a Knicks fan, he is a Rangers fan. So he's all things New York, uh, but we have him. And while he's here, uh, he's doing great things for the city of Boston. So with that, Father Nolan, welcome. Thank you, Councilor Flaherty. It's an honor to receive such a warm welcome at a city council meeting in, in my adopted city here in Boston. Uh, five years ago, I arrived here to complete my last stage of Jesuit formation at BC before ordination. And as you mentioned, I've now been missioned to serve here at BC, uh, BC High, your alma mater. And I love being a priest and I love being a Jesuit here in Boston. During the holy season of Advent, I like to prepare for Christmas each year by going to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And my first year in Boston, around this time of the year, I went to Arch Street for confession. I said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. It's been a month or so since my last confession. I'm a Jesuit, and I just arrived from New York. Before I could continue, the friar said, thank you, my son. Do you have any other sins? Let us pray. Eternal God, during this holy season of expectation and preparation, help us to prepare our hearts. This coming Sunday, the second in Advent, we read a quote from the prophet Isaiah in Mark's gospel. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. Prepare the hearts of our city councilors and all who serve this great city. Help them to see your presence in each other and in their constituents. Inspire them to be voices for the voiceless. May the spirit of the Lord rest upon them, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a 
a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of wonder and awe of the Lord. Finally, may your servants welcome and care for the most vulnerable in our city, those who are sick and suffering from this pandemic, the strangers in our midst, and young people like Mary and Joseph who welcomed your son into this world. We ask all of this, God of consolation, amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank We're you. gonna pledge allegiance to the flag at this time. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, of America. 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 and to the Republic under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again, Father Nolan, for that inspiring message. You are certainly welcome to continue to hang out with us if you'd like, but I know how busy you are. So feel free to uh, exit the Zoom at your leisure. We're gonna move on with our agenda. And the first order is the approval of the minutes. Seeing and hearing no objections or discussion about the minutes, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll to approve the minutes as presented. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, um, we have a unanimous approval of the minutes. Thank you so much. The minutes of the last meeting stand as approved. And now we'll move on to communications from his honor, the mayor, beginning with docket 1115, Madam Clerk. Docket 1115, message in order for the approval of the ordinance reauthorizing condominium conversion protections in the city of Boston, filed in the city clerk's office on November 30th, 2020. Thank you, docket 1115 will be referred to the Committee on Government Operations. We'll move on to docket 1116. Docket 1116, message and order approving an appropriation of $775,866 from the Edward Ingersoll Brown Fund for projects described in the attached order. The Edward Ingersoll Brown Fund commissioners met on October 9th, 2020 and voted to approve these projects. It is my belief and that of the commission that these projects will ornament the city streets, ways, squares, and parks as Mr. Brown directed in his will in the year 1892. Thank you so much. Docket 1116 will be referred to the Committee on City and Neighborhood Services. We'll move on to Docket 1117. Docket 1117, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expand a parkland acquisition and renovation for communities known as a park grant program awarded from the Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Division of Conservation Services in the amount not to exceed $400,000 to be administered by the Boston Parks and Recreation Department, the grant will fund the renovation of the Mission Hill Playground in Mission Hill. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Docket 1117 will be referred to the Committee on Environment, Resiliency, and Parks. We'll move on to Docket 1118. Docket 1118, message and order authorizes the City of Boston to accept and extend a local acquisition for the Natural Diversity Land Grant Program awarded from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, the Division of Conservation Services, in an amount not to exceed $387,055.80 to be administered by the Boston Environment Department. The grant will fund 
for conservation and passive recreation purposes, the acquisition of the parcel located at docket number 108 Walter Street in Rossendale neighborhood. Assessing Department identification number 20051950000. Thank you so much, Madam Clerk. The chair recognizes Council O'Malley. Council O'Malley, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. I ask for uh, suspension of the rules and adoption of docket 1118. Typically, my rule has been if it's, if it's above six figures, typically a, a hearing would be warranted, given the fact that this docket is precisely what we voted on at our last council meeting uh, with the companion uh, resolution put forth by this body in support of a project between Districts 5 and District 6, I'm talking about the Walter Street project, which is going to allow for some affordable housing on site, while at the same time, uh, some protected open land. Uh, this is a huge part of that. This has been such a tremendous uh, success story that is about 10 years plus in the making. So uh, again, I would ask my colleagues to that we suspend the rules and adopt docket 1118 so we can make sure that this project uh, gets uh, completed in uh, relatively short order. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. Council O'Malley, who is chair of the Committee on Environment, Resiliency and Parks, seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1118. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Councilor Arroyo on docket 1118. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Councilor Campbell. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Sorry. Oh, thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Councilor Edwards. Yeah. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, um, docket number 1118 has passed the unanimous Thank vote. Thank you so much. Docket 1118 has been passed, so we'll move on to reports of public officers and others, beginning with docket 1119. Would you like me to read all three 1119? Absolutely. 1119, 1120, and 1121, if you could read those together. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Docket 1119, communication was received from Maureen Joyce, City Auditor, transmitting reports listing transfers made solely for the purpose of closing accounts for fiscal year 2020. Docket number 1120, communication was received from the City Clerk and the filing from the Boston Redevelopment Authority of the application to the report and decision on the Trinity Orient Heights Phase three limited partnership chapter 121A project. Docket number 1121 communication was received from the city clerk of the filing of the Boston Redevelopment Authority of the First Amendment to the report and decision on the Foley chapter 121 project. Thank you. Dockets 1119, 1120, and 1121 will be placed on file, and we will move on to matters recently heard for possible action. Um, we're going to also take a couple of dockets together here. Madam Clerk, if you could do, if you could read dockets 10, I mean, 0195, 0363, 0364, 0365, 0689, 0. 859 0860 and 0910. We'll read those Thank together. You. I'll, I'll read them all now. Docket number 0195 Message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $200,000 in the form of a 2019 transportation planning grant awarded by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission to be administered by the Boston Transportation Department. The purpose of the grant is to fund a portion of the design costs under Tetra Tech contract um, for the Sullivan Square Rutherford Avenue project. Docket 0363, message and order authorizing the city of Austin to 
accept and expand a grant from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation in an amount not to exceed $4 million for the design engineering surf services related to the North Washington Street Bridge Project. Docket number 0364, message and auto authorization of the City of Boston to accept and expend a grant from NSTAR Electric Company, DBA, Eversource Energy, in an amount not to exceed $3,860,000 for costs related to the construction of the North Washington Street Bridge. Docket number 0365, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend a grant from the Boston Gas Company, known as DBA National Grid, in an amount not to exceed $2,890,000 for costs related to the construction of the North Washington Street Bridge. Docket number 0689, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend a grant from the Boston Planning and Development Agency in the amount not to exceed $200,000 to pay the costs related to the 100% design, PSE, of the intersection improvement project at Heath Street and South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain. Docket number 0859, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $295,000 in the form of a 2020 transportation construction grant awarded by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission to be administered by the Boston Transportation Department. The purpose of this grant is to fund the Cambridge Street and <coughs> Maffaway portions of the Lost Village Project in the Charlestown neighborhood. Excuse me. Docket number 0860, message and order authorized the city of Boston to accept and expand an amount of $200,000 in the form of a 2020 transportation planning grant awarded by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission to be administered by the Boston Transportation Department. The purpose of this grant is to fund a portion of the design costs under the Tector Tech contract for the Sullivan Square Rutherford Avenue project. And docket number 0910, message and order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend a grant to the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority in the amount not to exceed $30 million for costs related to construction and implementation of dedicated bus lanes and similar bus priority measures in various locations within the City of Boston. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Clerk. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilor Wu, who is the chair of the Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation. Councilor Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, Madam Clerk, for going through all that. As you can tell, we thank had a, a very full hearing, and I want to thank all of our colleagues who joined us, uh, many of whom were represent district councilors of uh, various pieces of, of these projects, um, Councilor Bach, Councilor Braden, Councilor Sabi George, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Edwards, and Councilor Flynn, um, who all asked very insightful questions that were important to get on the record as well. Uh, so these projects are all moving forward, and we got some details around the funding mechanisms, the uh, percent completion, the ways that this interacts with other planning studies in various neighborhoods. Um, I believe Councilor Braden even got some extra questions about other stuff happening in her district as well. Um, so I want to thank the administration officials for for the time, um, as was noted at the hearing, I think by Councilor Mejia, we are really getting to know Chief Osgood well with a series of, of Zoom hearings. So I wanna thank him and his team for all of the time and all of the work happening on the transportation side. Um, I am recommending passage of these grants. Um, I will just make a small footnote. One of them is not a specific city project, but related to the MPTA's funding for dedicated bus lanes in the city. Uh, we need to not only see this move faster and implementation happen faster. But we learned uh, during this that the MBTA has signaled to the city that this funding will not just be for one year because there had been concerns raised about what will happen amid, amid all of these budget crises at the T that we are hearing about. Um, what happens if, if we're only given this one grant, you know, and with many more bus lanes needed in, in years to come. Um, the administration shared that the MBTA has committed to provide this funding in subsequent years as well, which is a little bit outrageous that they are proposing service cuts at the same time that they're um, able to expend this funding. But such as it is, I, I really wanted to get on the record that that promise has been made to the city and that in previous years, we, we will need to continue to rely on this funding from, from the MBTA um, to keep this going. 
So thank you very much, Madam President, and recommend passage of all of these dockets. Thank you so much. And we're going to take these dockets individually uh, in, our, in our votes. Uh, beginning with the first docket, 10195. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please call the roll. We're going to call the roll on each docket. Thank you, Madam President. Docket 0195, Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Council Flaherty. Yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0195 passed with a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We'll move on to docket 0363 with a roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Docket 0363, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. 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 Councilor Janey, yes. Thank you. Councilor O'Malley. You skipped yes. me. Sorry. Excuse me, Councilor Mejia. I don't know how I did that. I'm sorry. That's okay. It happens a lot. <laughs> I hope not. No, uh, Councilor I, I, Mejia. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Councilor Mejia. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0363 passed with a unanimous vote. Thank you. Would you like so me much. to discontinue? Going yes, on? we'll go to docket 0364. Yes. Wonderful. Docket 0364. Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Council yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Asabi George. Yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Janey. Yes. Councillor Janey, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0364 has received a unanimous vote. Excellent. Could you please call the roll for 0365? Certainly. Docket 0365, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Council Baker. Yes. Council Baker, yes. Council Bach. Yes. Council Bach, yes. Council Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Oh, yes. Two feet, Councilor. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. Um, Madam President, docket number 0365 has passed with a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Could we move on to docket 0689 with a roll call? Thank you. Docket 0689, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. 
Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0689, passed with a unanimous vote. Wonderful. We'll move on to docket 0859. Thank you. Docket 0859, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0859 passed with a unanimous vote. Just two more left. So next we'll go to docket 0860 with a roll call, please. Thank you, Madam President. Docket 0860, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes, and Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0860 has passed with the unanimous vote. Thank you. And for the last docket? Docket 0910. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bark. Yes. Councilor Bark, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Councilor Asabi George. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor and if you Wu. could go back for Councilor Sabi George, okay. And um, Councilor Sabi George. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, uh, Madam Thank President, you. Madam Clerk, I was, I lost audio for a minute, need to re- Not a problem. Thank you. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Madam President, docket 0910, asked with a unanimous vote. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We will now move on to matters recently heard for possible action. Uh, docket 0840. Docket 0840, order for hearing regarding police contracts as a policy documents. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councillor Bach, who is chair of our committee on Ways and Means. Councillor Bach, you have the floor. Thank you so much, um, Madam President, and uh, thank you to all my colleagues who joined for this working session. Um, as folks know, we've had a series of hearings, both uh, a couple of hearings about overtime, um, and which we're going to continue all year, and then a prior hearing in September on this docket about police contracts um, as policy documents, uh, which was which is co-sponsored by myself, uh, Councillor Campbell, and Councillor Edwards. Um, the working session on Monday was really to try to draw together some of the threads um, that have been coming out of that conversation about the type of 
serious public policy expectations that the council may want to sort of formally communicate um, so that the parties at the table, we're not at the table in these negotiations, can negotiate knowing what the types of things are that we're looking for from the perspective of fiscal responsibility for the city, parity for our civilian workforces, um, you know, accountability, transparency, uh, the opportunity to think about where are there are places to have civilians be doing more civilian work and how do we um, support our officers in you know better health and safety in their work. Um, so it was a productive discussion. Um, I would just flag for everybody that I did send out a memo on behalf of the chair, um, and it's we're sort of in a period of um, I would really happily take folks's comments, questions, suggestions, additions um, on that. So um, I think a majority of our colleagues were able to make it on Monday, but um, for offices that weren't, it would be great to get written feedback on that front as well, um, because I think that this council. Um, made a strong statement back in 2016 when many colleagues were on the body. I was not um, with a unanimous letter saying that um, it was going to really heighten the scrutiny from these public policy perspectives on the next round of public safety contracts. And so that was uh, four years ago, but now we're, we're sort of there at the moment that was discussed. And in light of all of the conversations we've been having about accountability, including others that I know we'll hear about in a moment, um, there's a contract related hook on almost all of them. Um, and, and I think our, our public policy scrutiny on behalf of the public interest is compatible with, you know, uh, with negotiations that are happening with a strong labor union um, in a strong labor city. Uh, and, uh, and we really want to recognize that the role that we play on behalf of the public on that front. So it was a productive working session, um, Madam Chair, but I would say the work is not finished. And so I would ask that this matter remain in committee. Excellent. Docket 0840 will remain in the Committee of Ways and Means. And Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask if you could read Docket 0885 and Docket 1094 together, please. Thank you. Docket 0885, Ordinance Establishing a Civilian Review Board within the City of Boston. And Docket Number 1094, Message and Order for Your Approval, an Ordinance Establishing the Office of Police Accountability and Transparency, amending the City of Boston Code, Chapter 11, with the insertion of a new Section 2-16. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councillor Edwards, who is chair of the Government Operations Committee. Councillor Edwards, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, we recently, uh, yesterday, I think, <laughs> had a wonderful hearing about, or excuse me, a working session specifically on these two dockets. Um, the original the original file docket, excuse me, 0885, Civilian Review Board, filed by Councillors Mejia, uh, Campbell, and Arroyo created a civil, civilian review board um, with subpoena powers, and we had a hearing on that. The mayor subsequently filed two executive orders, creating a uh, civilian review board and an internal affairs uh, board, if you will, uh, and, and, and then after that filed this um, ordinance, creating the Office of Police Accountability and Transparency. Um, the two dockets, when you take them apart, really do complement each other, and I firmly believe there's a pathway forward that we can get this done together. Um, but I want to talk to the politics of the moment. First, the very real fact that we have a calendar year ending. We, and so that is why, instead of having a separate hearing on the OPAT ordinance, I decided it made more sense to combine the two in a working session to see where we, what we could get done this year. It's important that we as a city council meet this moment, uh, hear the urgency within our constituents. Um, we have been through a budget discussion. We have discussed defunding the police. We've discussed all sorts of things this year. Um, and the mayor has heard, we have heard that something needs to happen this year. And so it is with that vein of uh, answering the moment and meeting the urgency that I believe that we come in good faith to get this done this year. There's also the very real political fact that the mayor's filed ordinance, if we take no action on it at all, will automatically be passed, and I think, in January. So if we take no action, as in we do not uh, vote for it or against it, it would automatically pass as it's written. And uh, I don't believe that that's something that the city council wants to happen. I don't think that the mayor wants that to happen either. Um, the only option, if we don't get anything done, is to ask this body to reject without prejudice, which I think 
we're above that and can do more than that. So here we are, um, these major dockets and massive reform history before us. Um, I want to thank the task force members who came and testified, Jamal Crawford, Tanisha Sullivan, and I believe Allison Cartwright, um, as well as Jerome Smith, who's the chief of, um, who's chief of uh, Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, civic engagement uh, for now, at least until Friday. And then I also want to thank uh, all of my colleagues that showed up. So what we're going to try and do before the end of this year is combine these two dockets. I want to note that there are several things that are outstanding, um, several questions that we had, and I wanted the administration's willing to look at. Two thirds uh, being required of the, uh, for, for subpoena power, two thirds of the OPAT versus a unanimous requirement in order to have a subpoena. Uh, guarantees, uh, what guarantees of communication between the two separate boards, if two separate boards are to be set up under the OPAT, um, how do we get the regulations done? In what time frame are we supposed to get these regulations done? What happens when there's two investigations of the same time of the same police officer? One, uh, the IOP is strictly about how we investigate officers. The other one is about the civilian review board. We also wanted guarantees that we would be part of this process of the city council. We wanted to make sure that we'd be part of nominating every single one of the board members. That is the commissioners, the three that are proposed, as well as the board members of the Civilian Review Board and the IOP. Uh, currently, as proposed, the mayor does not allow, does not have us, the city council, be a part of the commission or the IOP. We wanted also to make sure that there was no conflict in language, specifically where the investigatory powers are to take a back seat when there's an out, out or ongoing criminal investigation. Uh, but that also says civil investigations as well. And we did not want to limit the investigatory powers of the OPAT um, and make them wait even for civil, any civil lawsuit that could be filed. And it's pretty common that you can have concurrent civil investigations going on now. So we wanted to have that power. Um, we also thought it would make sense that we looked at the uh, the formal reporting to the council, looking at the Boston Jobs and Policy, uh, Boston Residents Job Policy biannual meeting and coming to the council to explain what is going, what is not going well, uh, what funds they need, how they need to approach this. We think that this also, the OPAT, should come before the board or before the city council to explain what is going on and what they need. We um, we asked about the budget that is going to be necessary. Where what. What are we doing? Are we putting our money where our mouth is? Is this true reform or is this on paper only? Um, the other part is how does this new process marry with what just got passed also on the same day as our working session, which is the statewide police reform bill or, or to be passed, excuse me, sorry, hopefully passes at the state level where there's a decertification process now happening at the state. And how does this process, how will this agency commission communicate to the state. We think that there should be a, a back and forth and a really uh, adoption of some of those processes and deadlines and also standards in the city ordinance so that we're not in conflict or we don't have to come back and rewrite this again for the new uh, state uh, ordinance for police reform. And so with all of that before us, I want to congratulate and thank my colleagues because we came in with that, I think some sort of trepidation, trepidation or concern about politics getting in the way of progress. And we left with, we are going to get this done. So I'm asking uh, my colleagues and of course, Madam President to keep this in my committee. I've committed to eight o'clock AM working sessions on Friday, Saturday or Sunday to get this done because I believe so much in it. I wanna thank the original, again, the original co-sponsors, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Arroyo and Councillor Mejia for your leadership and, and coming, I believe, with pure hearts, open hearts, and ready to get to work <laughs> the moment that working session started. So um, again, I asked that it stay in committee, and I made a commitment before to this body and a tight turnaround when it came to the Housing Notification Act. I'm making that same commitment to this body again. I believe I can get it done, and I'm asking for that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councillor Edwards. I'm confident that we're, we'll get it done this year. Um, Dockets 0885 and docket 1094 will remain in the Committee of Government Operations. I uh, will move on now to docket 1102. Thank you. Docket 1102, order relative to the adoption of classification in the city of Boston's FY 2021. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councillor Bach. 
who is the chair of our Ways and Means Committee. Councillor Bach, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Madam President. Um, thank you to my colleagues, um, Councillors Flynn, Braden, Mejia, and Arroyo, um, who joined yesterday for our hearing on this matter. Um, Docket 1102 was introduced um, by myself uh, at our um, prior meeting, and it's about adopting the tax classification and the residential exemption um, for the city for property taxes for this year. So as we heard from Commissioner Arnello, who joined us along with um, Pam Coker from the Boston Municipal Research Bureau, uh, as the commissioner shared with us, um, classification is really, it's a mechanism in the city by which we, uh, we shift more of our property tax burden onto our commercial real estate and therefore uh, bring some tax relief to our residents in the city. Um, it's, it's something that's been uh, really pioneered and pushed by the citizens of Boston for four decades now. So the original legislation that made it possible in 78 was something Bostonians pushed. And then there's been updated legislation in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, basically every decade. Um, and it keeps having to be revisited because uh, the story of the last couple of decades, at least, has been one of residential property tax values outstripping um, commercial tax values in terms of the the rises, and as we all know, what that means for long-term homeowners is that folks trying to stay in our city find that they can become very house rich um, and yet cash poor and the property tax values can be quite burdensome. Um, for people to get a sense of the scale of what we're talking about here, um, the, the property tax um, valuations citywide, it's 66% uh, um, is residential property in terms of the value. But then because we make this classification shift, the property, the residential property owners pay 40% of the total um, property taxes in the city. And then commercial has that other third of our property value, but ends up paying uh, more than half of the levy. Um, so basically, uh, folks, is, if we were not to adopt classification, which is what this um, order is proposing, uh, many of our, and basically all of our residential property owners um, would see an increase in their tax bill. It varies a little bit with the math, but it's something like a 50% increase. Um, so it's a it's an enormous shift. And then separately, the residential exemption, which is another provision that the citizens of Boston fought for and won at the state house, um, it exempts the, uh, the an initial like portion of the value of your property. Um, and so that's actually saving every Bostonian who owns a home that's valued at $300,000 or more. It's saving them almost $3,000 a year in property tax. Um, and I think it's worth noting that it's actually a progressive component of um, our property tax regime. So when we have the residential exemption, the, the percent impact um, is the greatest for our property owners with, with lower valued properties. Um, although everybody it has, everybody who's an owner occupant has access to that exemption. Um, so just so folks understand from a timeline perspective, um, we, the city council need to make a recommendation on this front in order for the, um, assessor to communicate to DOR, to the department of revenue at the state level that we would like to take up both classification and the exemption for the year. And that's required as a step in order for them to issue the next round of third quarter tax letters. So there's a there's a, um, a sort of time crunch um, and just the way that this process all comes together, there's a pretty tight timeline that the state sets for our valuations to come in and then for us to make that determination. Um, and I think there's no question in my mind that in a year where everybody is um, is just suffering a lot of burdens and we've got a lot of you know residential homeowners who are dealing with a year like they've never seen, um, that the last thing we would want to do is, is deprive them of this significant tax relief that the city council has supported in every prior year since it's been enabled. So my recommendation today, um, Madam President, is that this docket ought to pass. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilor Bach seeks passage of docket 1102. Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask you to call the roll. Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> Docket 1102, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Clarity. 
Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Janey. Yes. Council Janey, yes. Council Mejia. Yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Romali. Council Romali. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Once again, Councilor O'Malley. Madam President, um, docket number 1102 has passed. Thank you so much. We'll move on to motions, orders, and resolutions. I believe that docket 1122 has been withdrawn. I just want to confirm. Yes. That has been withdrawn. Okay, so we will move on then to docket 1123. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Docket 1123, Council of Mejia offered the following order requesting certain information under sec section 17F regarding spending to address violence and substance use disorder in the mass cast. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I know all of these little speeches always come with a thousand thank yous at the top, but I would seriously like to just thank um, the folks who have been on the ground um, in the Mass and Cass area and the advocates and the administration and all of those who continue to work in the collaborative spirit to figure out the how to address a lot of these issues. Um, and I also want to give a special shout out to the South End Roxbury Partnership for all of their hard work. They have been out here on these streets almost every day, um, picking up needles, holding elected officials accountable, and making it clear what we all need to do to make our city safer and better for a, a better place for all people. The need for this 17F request came from multiple resources, um, sources, excuse me. First, when I attended the South and Roxbury Community Partnership, um, we learned that there was a serious of need uh, for transparency and accountability to the community living in and around Mass and Cass. And then in the follow-up hearings about Mass and Cass, I asked questions about who is spending what money and where. I got answers that only made me want to ask more questions. So we're hoping that this 17F request will give us the answers we're looking for. We want to know a few things. One is how much money has been spent to address substance use disorder or violence in the area in and around Mass and Cass, and a breakdown of that money to see how much is going to law enforcement versus to harm reduction versus community-based organizations. Congresswoman Presley always says that the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power. And by stepping back and letting the community define for themselves what questions they wanted answered, we hope to get to the bottom of what's working and what isn't. Thank you again to the community activists who put their time and effort into this doc docket. And Councilor Mejia, I assume you're seeking suspension of the rules and, and uh, passage of the docket? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Um, Madam Clerk, Council Mejia seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket. One, one, two, three, we will call the roll. Thank you. Thank you. Docket one, one, two, three, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker. Yes, yes. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor Romali. Yes. Councilor Romali, yes. And Councilor Wu. <laughs> yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1123 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Before we move on, um, Madam Clerk, I want to take us back to docket 1102. Um, right. Um, I believe uh, one of our colleagues had some connectivity issues and was not present for the vote and would Councilor like to be consideration to be, yes. Um, so, Councilor O'Malley, you would like to be added 
as an affirmative vote. That is correct, that. Madam President. Apologies that I had to step away, but if uh, we could have reconsideration of 1102 and please record me as a yay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So recorded. Now we will move on to docket 1124. Madam Clerk, could you please read it into the record? Really. Docket 1124, Councilor Arroyo offered the following order requesting certain information under Section 17F regarding BPD overtime records for the category of special events from January 2015 through November 2020. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councilor Arroyo. Councilor Arroyo, you have the floor. Madam President. Uh, this 17F, similar to a 17F that uh, was filed earlier in the year for court overtime records, uh, <coughs> to specifically the special events section of the overtime uh, for BPD from the year January 2015 to November 2020. Uh, the reasons for that are several. Uh, one of them is the council has uh, made a commitment to looking into overtime and ways in which we can effectively manage and look at uh, how it is being spent. Uh, but also, we've had several overtime hearings now. And in both of those hearings, we've had conversations about uh, not just what, how are you planning your hours or scheduling hours and manpower, but also questions about how are we scheduling response and how many officers are on duty or not on duty for specific events. Um, and we haven't really gotten a formula. Uh, there's been no, you know, we were told it was in a room, people look at it, they figure it out. And one of the things that I think this information will do for us is allow us to really look at specific dates in which we see spikes in the amount of officers being implemented and what events they're being spiked to implement and whether or not there's discrepancies there uh, in ways in which we can really dig into uh, ensuring that taxpayer money is used in the most responsible way possible when it comes to these special events. Um, and so this 17F just seeks the name uh, the times, the names, the ID numbers, locations, the event names, hours paid, hours worked for overtime shifts that fall under the BPD category of special events, uh, and it's the specific time frame of January 2015 up until November of 2020, um, so that we can see how recent events have also uh, affected those numbers. Thank you. And I would seek suspension and passage. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. And so Councilor Arroyo seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1124. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 1124, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, you just have to make it official, sorry. <laughs> Councilor right. Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Block, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Councilor Flaherty. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Okay. Yes, Madam Clerk, my apologies, I was on. Thank you, no, nope, not a problem. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1124 has received a unanimous vote. Excellent. Docket 1124 has been passed and we'll move on to docket 1125. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Docket 1125, Councilor Arroyo offered the following order for hearing to discuss COVID-19 rates by neighborhoods and strategies to reduce transmission. The chair recognizes Councilor Arroyo. Councilor Arroyo, you have a floor. Thank you, Madam President. I recognize that uh, considering that it's December, it's late for a hearing. And so I do recognize that. But the reason that I sought one for this uh, is specifically we're in the middle of the second wave of COVID-19. And we've had several sort of what I would call recent. Uh, they're not new issues, but recently have been risen to the top of the list again in terms of COVID-19 responses. One of those issues uh, is the wait times that we have seen for folks to get tested. Uh, and that uh, is, you know, I think with Thanksgiving, uh, 
generally speaking, we're about two weeks or a week away from seeing how that's imp impacted our numbers. Uh, it's an appropriate time to know how we're going to go about testing um, in our neighborhoods, specifically because the disparities that we were seeing at the beginning of COVID are the same exact disparities that we're continuing to see today. We're still seeing uh, larger uh, death tolls and death rates for Black and Latino uh, residents. We're still seeing Black and Latino neighborhoods and working class neighborhoods suffering the brunt of COVID uh, transmissions. And so this, the goal of this hearing is to really get into the testing, uh, what plans do we have in place as we head into the winter. Uh, the Boston Public Health Commission has recently changed how they are tracking COVID metrics on their dashboard. And I think it's important for us to have a hearing about why and how that's changed, uh, why those changes are considered for the better and, and how we can make that more transparent for our communities. Uh, and so uh, I'm seeking a hearing uh, on this issue. Uh, we, we, I think we have a date we've held for this month, uh, my office to do this. Uh, but my hope is that this would be uh, relevant for what we're doing heading forward into the winter uh, with this spike that we're currently seeing. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councilor O'Malley. Councilor O'Malley, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Rise to commend the maker. Ask that my name be added. Um, this is something that, that we've obviously been talking about. The testing aspect is absolutely crucial to getting these numbers under control. And I can tell you that two weeks ago, I went to three of uh, one of the city's pop-ups and then two of the other um, um, uh, neighborhood health centers, uh, and the wait time was two hours uh, at one. One of the sites was actually canceled at the last minute. There's a lot of people queued up. That's not to disparage the incredible uh, yeoman's work being done by these community health centers. It's just simply the snapping isn't there to meet the demand. So I think that this is not only a timely hearing, but an important one. And I would just end by saying I think it's a real opportunity for us to work with some of our colleges and universities. Uh, media reports have really talked about how some colleges have really stepped up. I was speaking with my predecessor, John Tobin, who's an official at Northeastern University. Uh, Northeastern has done 450,000 tests uh, since the start of the semester, and they're processing I think it's something close to 15 or 20,000 tests per day. Um, that's important. We want to make sure that's done, but they have a capability and they have sort of an on site ability to facilitate these. That as we talk about pilot fees, as we talk about ways that we can better partner with our uh, universities and colleges, perhaps. Um, Supp uh, uh, supplementing some of our testing sites with, with some of the private colleges would be a way that we could offer testing, effective testing, and testing with a quick turnaround. Because, of course, the other issue is that it took me uh, five days to get my results. Um, I quarantined, was able to do so, but some people aren't. So sometimes when the wait, line is, the wait time is that lagging, uh, it, can, it can really render the testing um, immaterial. So it's a great issue. Happy to partner with it. See any way we can help. And again, looking at ways that we can tap some other stakeholders to make sure that we can offer um, as robust a testing infrastructure in the city as humanly possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Madam President. I will be brief. I just want to thank the maker for, you know, lifting up these issues again. They are timely. Um, and of course, we're continuing to get calls and emails with respect to the wait. Um, and as more folks are looking to return to employment, there are opportunities out there. Testing, of course, is so essential um, to these workers. So thank you, um, Council Arroyo, for your leadership here, continued leadership. And please, Madam uh, President, add my name. Thank you so much. Not seeing any other blue Zoom hands. We'll sh do a physical hand for sign on. Madam Clerk, if you would please add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Braden, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Bach. You already have Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Wu. Any, did I get everyone? Okay. Please also uh, add <clears throat> the chair. Um, docket 1125 will be assigned to uh, the Committee of Public Health, and we'll now move on to Docket 1126. Docket, excuse me, Docket 1126. Councillor Asabi George offered the following petition for a special law regarding enfranchising the Boston School Committee's student member. Chair recognizes Councillor Asabi George. Councillor Asabi George, you have the floor. 
Thank you very much, Madam President. After a long-standing partnership and many conversations with the Boston Student Advisory Council, the time has come to formally begin the process to consider enfranchising the student member of the Boston School Committee. Currently, the school committee structure allows for seven full voting, voting members and one student member. This student member attends every school committee meeting, participates in school committee policy deliberations, and is a public voice representing our actual Boston Public School students. The student member is elected by the BPS student population through the Boston Student Advisory Council. In many ways, the student member contributes enormously to the discussion at the school committee and does the same level of work to prepare for these meetings as a full voting member. The main difference between them is just that the student member currently does not have the right to vote on the committee. This home rule petition is the beginning of what will undoubtedly be a complex and long conversation regarding the structure of the school committee. There are many reasonable arguments as to why the student member should be an equal voting member. Currently, the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, the Mass Board, includes one student member who is a full voting member like the other adult non-student members of that state board. As a city, we proclaim loudly and often that the voice of the youth matters to us and that we take our student concerns seriously. Allowing the student member to simply further, to, to have that simple further recognition, um, and it says that our students ought to be able to weigh in on their education and the issues in our public schools that matter to them. There are many concerns about the prospect of a student member having voting, full voting rights and some logistical concerns with this petition, including the timing. Uh, but I do hope that we could have um, a, a pretty thoughtful debate and conversation and perhaps some offers um, of comments today, but know that this petition will be addressed again in the year. I am um, also aware that adding the student member vote uh, to the school committee would then create eight people and uh, perhaps a, uh, a possibility of more ties on the school committee. So currently, um, the process by which candidates to fill that student member uh, role are selected uh, by BSAC, but it's not clearly outlined to the general public. That needs to certainly happen. We know that the enabling acts of 1991 that created our current school committee structure spells out the nomination process for current full members. My hope is that through this process, we will create a similar, if not greater, transparency regarding the selection of both full adult members and the election of a student member. As a former member myself of NSAC and as someone who has watched many student members excel and be deeply engaged in the school committee, despite not having the right to vote, I am committed to finding a way to enfranchise the student member of the Boston School Committee. This home rule petition will certainly be edited and reshaped several times before we take a vote on it. I look forward to hearing from all of you and the public about your support, your concerns, and any additional considerations while we have this necessary conversation. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Savi George. Not seeing any discussion, let me just add. Um, as I think you know, I'm in 100% agreement. Um, I think this is critically important. The student representative, in my estimation, has often been the most vocal, thoughtful member, oftentimes, on, on different issues, uh, asking amazing questions and really pushing the work forward. I would argue that we should have two student members who could vote, and that solves the tie issue. I've always felt like one student member voting or non -mem or non voting was not enough, and that there should be two members. So that's my two cents. I do see some blue zoom hands, and so now I will call on call upon colleagues, starting with uh, Councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Councillor Sabi George, and thank you for your leadership here. I also want to thank uh, Kimani James, who, of course, has been um, just an incredible advocate on this issue and so many others, along with the previous student representatives. I also have to give a shout out to my chief of staff, Ellie, for her past leadership with respect to this work as well. Um, it's been a topic of discussion for far too long. Like you said, if we value the voice of youth and truly value it and give them a vote. Um, so I wanted to go on record. 
Um, I will tell you in response to this, uh, folks have also suggested to break the tie, whether it's another student, a parent voice, or some other way. There are other creative ways we could think about it. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. And then, of course, um, I imagine the discussion will expand to include the other discussions about the structure of the school committee, which you have also led on um, in creating space for folks to talk about the various ideas that are out there that are important to make sure that this is truly accountable to the residents of the city of Boston and not, are not viewed as or deemed to be a rubber stamp committee. Um, their work is very important. They do incredible work, of course, with respect to so many issues. So thank you, uh, Councillor Sabi George and Madam President, please add my name. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councillor Flynn. Councillor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Madam President, please add my name and I agree. I had the opportunity to listen and participate in many school committee meetings over the last several years. And from my experience, the student representative on the school committee um, asked important questions, provided significant input, um, took the job seriously, and debated with his colleagues um, about BPS-related issues. I think that's the type of dialogue we need. Um, in, in hearing that dialogue from a young person, the student representative added a lot to the debate. So I'm on, I'd like to go on record in support as well. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councillor Wu. Councillor Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I um, just wanted to very quickly thank the sponsor and say I'm all for it. We should move this ahead um, and, and agreed that there are larger conversations about our school committee governance and, and school governance in general, but this piece should move forward regardless um, and, and really be accelerated. So thank you very much and please add my name. Excellent. The chair recognizes Councilor Arroyo. Councilor Arroyo, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just also want to Thank the maker for this uh, and echo all of the comments and support. And I also just want to say that I think uh, President Jamie's suggestion of uh, enhancing the two seats, making a second seat for students actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I would support that as well if that finds its way into how we think about this in the future. But I think this is a fantastic idea um, and I applaud you for putting it on the floor. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Obviously, all things youth um, bring me lots of joy and excitement, so I'm here for all of it. and want to thank um, Councillor Sabi George for putting it forth. Um, I think it's due time. We always talk about young people being the future, but really do we create opportunities for them to define what future the they want for themselves. And so this will be another great way for that restorative justice um, to work. And I agree with Councillor President, Council Janey, in regards to having two young people um, on the board. I think that that is a really great way to solve that tie issue, but also more importantly, Importantly, um, in terms of equity, it gives more youth um, voice because they're the ones who are living these realities. They're the ones who know exactly what they want to see change, and they're the ones who should be um, able to have a, 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 a voice, a louder voice. Not, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Enough voice to, to speak their truth, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the chair now recognizes Councilor O'Malley. Councilor O'Malley, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. J just briefly, I'd like to add my voice to the chorus, thanking uh, the at-large council from Dorchester for her leadership in this space and on all things education. Um, obviously, I, I enthusiastically add my uh, name and, and add my support to this initiative. Would certainly agree with the comments made by several of you that quite often the youth voice, the youth representative on the school committee has offered the most compelling uh, and relevant testimony to many of these weighty issues. I'd simply close by saying, obviously, um, the, the calendar is, is quick ending, so it is likely, as the uh, author suggested, we'd be looking at this again in the new year. One thing I've always supported has been a hybrid model for a school committee, and I, that's half elected, half appointed. And I think even at this, looking at the student uh, position, to be elected among Boston public school students is also something I'd like to explore. Um, I think that's another way to have that direct uh, impact and direct voice of the students who obviously are the most important stakeholders as it comes to BPS. So uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. And before I ask for a show of physical hands, I'm uh, going to turn it back over to Councillor Sabi George for a very brief uh, yeah. response or comment. 
Thank you, Madam President. I'm sorry to interject again. I do want to make it clear that aside from the vote, one thing we are working on now with the um, school district is how do we also make sure that this student member, whether voting or not, is also able to receive the stipend. We may see that before the body as well um, as it is an expenditure, but we are we are looking into that. So it isn't before the body yet. It may be before the body related to, but not directly um, required of a voting member. Just wanted to add that. It's a $7,500 okay. stipend. All other members get, the student should also receive it. Amen. Um, show of physical hands now for those who want to add their names. Madam Clerk, if you could please add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Flynn, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Bach, Councillor Flaherty, Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Braden, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Arroyo, Councillor Wu. I believe Councillor Mejia, you are adding your name too. And please add the chair. I believe that's all of us. Did you add? Yes, I have my hand. I don't know if, I, if you can yes, see. Yes, I see your hand. Please add Councillor Mejia as well. Thank you so much. Uh, docket 1126 will be assigned to the Committee on Government Operations. We'll move on to Docket 1127. Docket 1127, Council of Flynn offers the following resolution, recognizing Native American Heritage Day. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Council of Flynn. Council of Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, may I add Council of Block as an original co-sponsor to this resolution? Seeing and hearing no objections, Council of Bach has been added. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Madam President, this resolution is to recognize Native American Heritage Day, which is observed every year on the Friday after Thanksgiving in Native American Heritage Month, which is November. I know it's a bit late, but it's still important that we recognize Native American history and achievements. Native Americans have been important contributors, contributions to our history. The name of our state, Massachusetts, came from the Massachusetts Native American tribe that lived in the Blue Hills region. The word translate as the Great Hill. Other tribes in the area include Wampanoag, Pawtucket, Nipmuc, and Narragansett, among others. In my neighborhood of South Boston, we also at one time had a large um, Nipmuc Native American community, and they worked often in the building trades, including the iron workers. Um, Native Americans have also contributed, contributed enormously in the U.S. Armed Forces. According to military times, they serve at a higher rate than any other demographic. And since 9-11, 19% of Native Americans have served in the U.S. Armed Forces, compared to an average of 14% of other ethnicities. In the First and Second World War, Native Americans have been crucial at using coded messages to secure victories. The most well-known are the Navajo Code Talkers, which created an unbreakable code in the unwritten Navajo language that gave the U.S. Marines a critical edge in the war in the Pacific in World War II. We also need to rec recognize that despite their contributions, Native Americans have been excluded from Boston historically. The Indian Imprisonment and Exclusion Act of 1675 banned indigenous residents from living within Boston city limits. And though unenforced in modern times, it was not formally repealed until 2004. Therefore, we need to ensure that our Native American residents receive the necessary support to advance their quality of life. We must also recognize their important contributions and sacrifices to our country and to honor their rich cultural heritage and celebrate their diversity. And finally, Madam President, I, I wanted to especially highlight the Native American uh, veterans because here they are sacri sacrificing for our nation um, in many wars, getting, getting killed in action, getting wounded in action, and coming back to our country. Um, and not treated with the same level of respect 
in dignity as other ethnicities. So I wanted to highlight, especially highlight that point. Thank you, Madam, Pre Madam President, for giving me the opportunity to um, highlight this. Thank you so much, Councillor Flynn. The chair recognizes Councillor Bach. Councillor Bach, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to first acknowledge that the land that Boston City Hall stands on is a traditional indigenous territory of the Massachusetts nation. And I'm very grateful to Councillor Flynn um, and proud to be a co-sponsor on this resolution recognizing Native American Heritage Day. We really have to ensure that we celebrate Native American and indigenous peoples, not only through our words and actions like this, but by listening to and supporting the Native and indigenous peoples that are a part of our community today. Um, I often think about the North American Indian Center of Boston um, and their daily work from offices at Heath Street out on the edge between my district and Councillor um, O'Malley's, their daily work to support the indigenous communities of our whole region. I've been privileged to work with them on a number of things, most recently in regard to trying to save the train to Heath Street as Fatih is proposing to cut it off at Brigham Circle, um, a fight which is ongoing. Uh, and, you know, I think Councillor Flint has alluded to the fact that our uh, Native American um, and indigenous, uh, you know, fellow residents and citizens are um, disproportionately veterans. They're also disproportionately likely to be dependent on transit um, in, and, and disproportionately likely to be uh, impacted by a host of the injustices of our society because of this long legacy um, of injustice that has run back for hundreds of years. Um, it's not an accident. And so more than marking a day, which I do think we need to do, and I'm again, proud to be part of this resolution, um, I think we all have to keep in mind that we honor them best with justice. Uh, we have to do more um, in the coming years uh, to ensure that their lands, their histories, and communities are protected. Um, but I think uh, uh, acknowledging um, them for this Heritage Day is a, is a step in the right direction. So uh, thank you so much, Madam President. And I, I join Councillor Flynn in, uh, in urging um, uh, suspension and passage of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Councillor Braden. Councillor Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I want to thank the sponsors for uh, this resolution. It's vitally important that we continue to recognize and, and uplift the um, heritage, the Native American uh, heritage and, and indigenous peoples in our city. Um, it's, it's always important to recognize and acknowledge that we live on the former, the lands of indigenous peoples. And uh, I come, from, I live in Oak Square, Brighton, uh, which is the Native peoples there, um, the, the Nonantum uh, band, uh, were um, historically um, converted to Christianity at the bottom of my street uh, in Oak Square under an oak tree. So uh, it's a painful history. It's, it's important to recognize the painful history of displacement and genocide. But it's also important that to recognize that Native and Indigenous peoples are still with us. They live, they're not an artifact of history in a, a bygone time. Native peoples still live in our city. They're very important uh, uh, contributors to our society, uh, especially in the military, as, as um, Councillor Flynn has, has mentioned. So I uh, wholeheartedly support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councillor Braden. The chair recognizes Councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and I'll, I'll be brief. I, I want, of course, thank the makers um, and uh, Councillor Flynn, thank you for that detailed uh, historical context that many don't know. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, congratulate you both for bringing this forward, but also, you know, I live in Mattapan, Mattapan which we know is named, uh, either some have suggested it's a good place to be or a good place to sit, um, which comes from um, our indigenous people. Um, and most don't know that history. And so I really appreciate you lifting it up. Um, I'll also add, you know, if we look at COVID-19, there is a renewed conversation across the country on really looking at how disparities, not only in health, but across every metric, is affecting our native brothers and sisters and indigenous people and how it's actually worse than many communities of color. And that's not by accident because of that history that Councilor Braden and of course, Councilor Brock also spoke to of uh, genocide and displacement. Um, and so I think this is an opportunity as we are talking about how the history informs the present and particularly the inequities we see in the city of Boston, in Massachusetts, in the Commonwealth, and of course in the country 
that Native folks are bearing the brunt of many of these things, but often are not included or a part of the conversation. And so I'm looking forward to being more intentional there um, and really think this is one, uh, one way to begin that conversation. So thank you both. Please add my name, Madam President. Um, and, um, and I also wanna just lift up those who are doing the work every single day to make sure that political leadership is more representative of, of uh, indigenous folks. And of course, that we are also bringing their stories into the fold. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. Um, before we go on, let me just quickly say, um, first of all, just many thanks to the makers. Um, if you recall last month, we did a land acknowledgement, and I think it's it's really important. I'm just thinking back of my own schooling right here in Boston Public Schools and what I was taught about the relationship between indigenous folks and the pilgrims and um, the colonists who, who came. And, you know, I think as we now know that that history, that education was very, um, let's say, misinformed um, and bold-faced lies. I don't know how we want to express it, but, you know, it's important to acknowledge it's, it's not just the land that, that City Hall sits on and, and where our homes sit on that used to be belong to Indigenous folks, but it's how that land got acquired that we've got to remember, and it was very violent and brutal. And that is a part of the American story of, of how this country was formed, and it's painful, and I know people don't like to talk about that, but it's important that we acknowledge that and that we make sure that we don't find ourselves repeating um, this in the, in the future. We've got lots of disparities, as you heard Councilor Campbell mention, and it's important that we do everything to shore up and strengthen uh, communities throughout Boston, particularly those who have been vulnerable because of racism colonialism and every other ism around. Um, thank you very much again to the makers. I would ask for a show of physical hands uh, for those who want to have their names added to this resolution. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, if you could please add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Asabi George, Councillor Braden, Councillor O'Malley, Councillor Bach, well, Councillor Bach is a, a sponsor, Councillor Campbell, Councillor Wu, Councillor Baker, Councillor Arroyo, Councillor Mejia, and please also add the chair. I believe that is, is all of us. Uh, the makers of this docket seek suspension of the rules and adoption of the resolution. We'll do so by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. Docket number 1127, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. So Flynn, yes. Councillor Janey. Yes. Councillor Janey, yes. Councillor Mejia. Yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley. Yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu. Yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Madam President, um, docket number 1127 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Uh, docket 1127 has been adopted. We'll now move on to personnel orders, beginning with docket 1128. Thank you. Docket 1128, Councilor Janey for Council of Flynn. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1128. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 1128, Councilor Arroyo. Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. 
Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Council Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1128 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. The next personnel order is docket 1129. Docket 1129, Councilor Janey for Council Flynn. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1129. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Certainly. Docket 1129, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bark. Yes. Councilor Bark, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Now I can. Thank yes. you. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor mm. Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1129 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Docket 1129 has been passed. We'll move on to docket 1130. Thank you. Docket 1130. Councilor Ganey for Council of Flynn. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1130. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Certainly. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Councilor Edwards. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Councilor Sabi George. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Janey. Yes. Council Janey, yes. Council Mejia. Yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council O'Malley. Yes. Council O'Malley, yes. And Council Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Uh, Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Madam. President, docket number 1130 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Uh, docket 1130 has been passed. Before we move on, I'm just going to ask, there's some connection issues. I know some of us have new speakers. If we could speak up with the yes vote or no vote or however you're voting, if people could just speak up so that the clerk can, can hear you, that would be great. Um, we'll now move on to docket 1131. Thank you. Docket 1131, Councilor Janey for Council of Flynn. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 1131. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Docket 1131, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Council Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1131 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Docket 1131 has passed. We'll move on to docket 1132. Docket 1132, Councilor Janey for Council of Clarity. Thank you. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 1132. Madam Clerk, if you could please call the roll. 
differently. Docket 1132, mm -hmm. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 1132 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We're moving on in our agenda. Next is late files. Folks know I frown upon those. We do have a couple this week. Um, certainly personnel orders are simple. So three of them are personnel orders. Uh, one is a hearing order. So I do want to give uh, folks time to, to get that late file matter before your eyes. So if you check your email. Um, so we need to take just we need to add these to the agenda these dockets to the agenda do people have the dockets okay great uh, madam clerk we'll uh take a roll call vote to add the items to the agenda um for submission of late files to be properly before the body councillor arroyo Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Councillor Baker, yes. Councillor Bach. Yes. Councillor Bach, yes. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Campbell. Yes. Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Sabi George. Yes. Councillor Sabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty. Yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, um, the late files are now properly before the body. Okay. Thank you so much. And will Madam Clerk, if you could read the first late mile file matter into the record. Okay. It's a personnel order. Um, on November 30th, 2020, Councilor Janey for Councilor Baker. Uh, the chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of this uh, late file matter. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. First late file. Um, all right, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, the first late file matter has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We can move on to the second late file matter. Sorry. That's okay. Second late file matter. Um, on November 30th, 2020, uh, Councilor Kim Janey for Councilor Wu. The chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of the second late file matter. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Um, second late file matter, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bark. Yes. Councilor Bark, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. 
Councillor Campbell, yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Edwards, yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Asabi George, yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flaherty, yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Flynn, yes. Councillor Janey, yes. Councillor Janey, yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor Mejia, yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. Councillor O'Malley, yes. And Councillor Wu, yes. Councillor Wu, yes. Madam President, the second late file matter has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. The second late file matter has been passed and now we'll move on to the third late file matter. I believe this is also personnel order. Yes. Um, third late file is Council Arroyo. Yes. Council Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Council Baker, yes. Council Bark. Yes. Council Bark, yes. Council Braden. Yes. Council Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. And Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, the third late file matter has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. The third late file matter has been passed. Now we'll move on to the fourth and final. Thank you. And if you could, this is an actual hearing order, first, Madam Clerk. If first you could and last. Exactly. Thank you. Um, offered by Councillor Campbell, order for hearing regarding COVID-19 vaccines. Whereas people of color have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 pandemic, with Black people representing 27% of total cases and Latinx people 33% of cases, despite being 25.3 and 19.7 of the population, respectively. Whereas multilingual community outreach and partnership with community leaders is necessary for effective and equitable dis distribution of COVID-19 vaccine, and therefore be it ordered that the city of Boston has a responsibility to develop strategies that will result in the most equitable outcomes possible for communities of color. Now, therefore, ordered that the appropriate committee on the Boston City Council hold a hearing to discuss strategies to equitably distribute and address distrust in COVID-19 vaccine, and that representatives from the healthcare community um, and industry, the Public Health Commission, the Health and Human Service Department, the Office of Equity, Public Health, advocates, including the Black Boston COVID-19 Coalition and the public be invited to testify, filed on December 2nd, 2020. Thank you so much, Madam Clerk. The chair recognizes Councilor Campbell. Councilor Campbell, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Madam President, and my apologies for the late file. As you can imagine, we've been getting a lot of calls um, and emails and just was in a meeting this morning in my district, uh, virtually, of course, where this issue came up around the vaccine, of course, and, and making sure that communities of color in particular um, are brought into the fold early with respect to conversations around distrust in access. Um, as it is looking more likely that a COVID-19 vaccine will be available soon, possibly before the end of the year, I think it is critical that the city of Boston has a plan to distribute that vaccine equitably. A big piece of this, of course, is developing strategies, not only with our healthcare providers, but also with communities of color, who, although disproportionately impacted and vulnerable to the virus, are more skeptical of a vaccine and less likely to get it. This is because of a long and painful history of medical racism against Black people in which we have been denied treatment or purposely mistreated by doctors and medical institutions. This hearing will look at how the city will prioritize distribution of the vaccine, 
such as to essential and front and frontline workers, teachers, and communities with the highest infection rates, but also strategies to build trust and to deliver culturally competent information about the vaccine and why it's so important. Multilingual outreach, community outreach, and partnership with community leaders is necessary for effective and equitable distribution of the vaccine. And so, of course, I look forward to working with all of you the administration, our health care commission, um, leaders on the ground, and residents in my own district who have been in doing incredible work with respect to these many issues. Um, again, my apologies for the late file. If we cannot, of course, get it done before the end of the year, we'll refile it um, in the new year because it will probably require a whole host of conversations. But because of the pressing calls we got, wanted folks to know that we are taking this very serious. Um, thank you, Madam President, um, again. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Yes, and I know how much you frown upon um, late files and people who talk too much, so I'll try to be as quick as possible because I, I don't want people to come to me no more. Um, I, I just really think that I'm happy to see Councillor Campbell uh, addressing this issue. I know that in my um, my own immediate family and even in my own little village, I've been getting a lot of calls as well from people who are saying that they refuse to take this vaccine. Um, they don't want to be guinea pigs and they don't trust the government. Um, and uh, many are concerned about um, if they don't take the vaccine, they're concerned about what's going to happen to their livelihood as to whether or not they're even going to be able to work. So I think that the, the, the fear is real in, in communities of color, and I'm really excited to be a part of this conversation. And um, thank you again to the maker and looking forward to um, being a part of the dialogue. And please add my name. Thank you so much. Um, a show of physical hands, please, for those who want to add their names. Madam Clerk, if we could please add Councillor Edwards, Councillor Braden, Councillor Sabi George, Councillor Flynn, Council Mejia, Council Wu, Council Bach, Council Royo, Council Flaherty. Please also add the chair. Um, this final late file matter will be referred to the Committee on Public Health. We'll now move on to green sheets. Um, I see at least one colleague who would like to pull from the green sheets and I'm aware of, and that is Councillor Bach. Um, so I'm gonna call upon Councillor Bach. We obviously have to make sure that these matters are before the body. So we'll take a pause to make sure that people can get to their emails. Um, Chair recognizes Councillor Bach. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to pull docket 1085 on page two of the green sheets, currently assigned for further action for its second reading. Um, the full detail of this is on page 26. Thank you so much. And while folks check their emails, I'm going to have ask our clerk to just read the docket into the record while folks pull up their email so that they have it properly before them. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. All right. And this is this is uh, one zero eight five. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. No worries. I, I, I knocked it off on page two, but not on page twenty six. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, on page twenty six of twenty six. Docket uh, in the committee on SPs, docket number 1085, sponsored by the mayor. Message and order approving an appropriation of 180, I'm sorry, 1 million, no, I'm sorry, 182 million, 841 thousand, 467 dollars for the purpose of paying costs of designing, constructing, equipping, and furnishing a new six-story Josiah Quincy Upper School Building at 900 Washington Street in the City of Boston, including payment of cost incidental or related thereto. This was referred to committee on November 4th, 2020. A hearing was held on November 17th, 2020. Um, and on November 18th, uh, this matter was passed with a first reading and assigned for further action. And, and now it's time for our second reading, okay? Right. Um, the chair recognizes Councillor Bach. 
Yes, no, as the clerk has just read, this is in relation to the Josiah Quincy Upper School. For time, I won't go into this, except to say, as we said last time, this has been a long odyssey for the Chinatown community. Um, and we are so thrilled. And I know that Councillor Ed Flynn, our colleague whose district this is, is so thrilled um, to see this finally coming to fruition. Um, so as we all know, our capital dockets do in debt the city, right? We issue bonds on that. And so because of that, um, we vote on them twice, two weeks apart. And so we voted on this two weeks ago. Um, and now I, I would move that we take the second um, vote in favor so that this, this important project can get underway. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. So we're voting on this, and I'm going to ask our clerk to call the roll. Madam Clerk. Whoops. Docket number 10A5. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket 1085 has a unanimous vote for its second reading and has passed. Thank you so much. Having received its second reading, docket 1085 is now passed. I do believe there is another item being pulled yes. from the green sheets. I believe it is docket 0247 and that it can be found on page, if you have the actual green sheets, page 12 of 26. While folks are checking uh, their emails, I'm, I'm going to just uh, ask our clerk to read it into the to the record, and then I'm going to call upon Council Wu, who will speak to the docket. Thank you, Thank you, Madam President. In the Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation, on page 12 of 26, docket number 0247, sponsored by the mayor, message and order authorizing the city of Boston to accept and expend an amount of $406,299 <laughs> In the, form of, in the form of a grant awarded by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation pursuant to the Federal Safe Accountability Flexible Efficient Transportation Equity Act, a legacy user, uh, the purpose of this grant is to find the preliminary and final design of Boylston Street between Ipswich Street and Brookline Ave in Boston. It was referred to committee on January 29th, 2020. Thank you so much. Hoping everyone has their, their inbox up and you have this item before you. Um, calling upon Council Wu, who will speak to the docket. Thank you so much. Council Wu, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I mean, effectively, this was our, this was part of the same um, set of grants and the same hearing that we had talked about earlier in the council meeting. So I don't have too much else to say on this. Um, basically, all that applies applies here as well. OK. Um, Madam Clerk, shall we call the roll, please? Yes. Docket number 0247, Councilor Arroyo. Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Bach. Yes. Councilor Bach, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Sabi George. Yes. Councilor Sabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, docket number 0247 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Docket 0247 um, has been passed. 
We'll move on in our agenda to the consent agenda. The chair moves for adoption as presented. Madam Clerk, would you please call the room? Here is my sheet. <laughs> uh, oops, I just have that one. Uh, consent agenda. Councilor Arroyo. Yes. yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Baker, yes. Councilor Block. Yes. Councilor Block, yes. Councilor Braden. Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Campbell. Yes. Councilor Campbell, yes. Councilor Edwards. Yes. Councilor Edwards, yes. Councilor Asabi George. Yes. Councilor Asabi George, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Janey. Yes. Councilor Janey, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor O'Malley. Yes. Councilor O'Malley, yes. Councilor Wu. Yes. Councilor Wu, yes. Madam President, the consent agenda has been approved with a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We will move on now uh, to announcements. Um, and before I call on my colleagues, let me just, we've got a lot of movement happening, happening in the city of Boston. And I wanna just take a moment to acknowledge some of our public servants. Um, as I think folks know, Chief Jerome Smith is leaving the city of Boston. He has served as the chief of civic engagement and the director of ONS. He's been with the city for 11 years. Uh, his last day is on Friday. I've had the pleasure as a District 7 counselor of working very closely with, with Chief Smith on a number of items impacting my district. Um, he has been extremely helpful in Nubian Square, so I wanted to wish him well, uh, congratulate him on his new opportunity, and thank him for his dedicated service to the city of Boston. With him leaving, that means we've got some new folks coming in, and I certainly want to give a huge shout out to the new chief of civic engagement, and that is Aisha Miller. Folks know her from her time at ISD. Uh, she is stepping into that role as the new chief of engagement, so we welcome her and congratulate her uh, in that role. Eddie McGuire is the new director of ONS, so certainly want to congratulate him. Jessica Thomas, who I've had the pleasure of working with again in District 7. She's the Roxbury uh, liaison she is going to step into the role that I, Aisha Miller was in at, at ISD. So certainly want to congratulate Jessica on her uh, promotion. She will be the Assistant Commissioner of Constituent Services for ISD. Um, Faiza Sharif um, is also uh, stepping up. And she was, I worked with her as a South End liaison. She is the new Deputy Director of ONS. So we certainly congratulate her in her new role. And then finally, uh, Kimberly Crucioli, and I apologize if I'm butchering your name, but she is the new South End Back Bay Village liaison, and we welcome her and congratulate her and her role. So I just wanted to offer the warm welcome and congratulations to the new folks coming in, folks who are stepping up into new roles and folks who are leaving. Um, so we wish them well on behalf of the entire city council. At this time, the chair recognizes Council Flaherty. Council Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be very brief. Just wanted to, um, as you recall from our last hearing, uh, my reception uh, was horrendous at the end of the meeting. So just want to make sure that uh, I was clear that uh, with respect to uh, an update on the release of the Community Preservation Trust Funds, uh, it's important to note that, that we received 28.6% match uh, this round from the trust fund distribution. Uh, and this base match is significantly higher than uh, recent years, uh, in large part, uh, because of a great assist uh, from our Register of, of Deeds, uh, former City Council Steve Murphy, uh, and also the fact that uh, on behalf of the Council, uh, I had uh, put forth a resolution in partnership with uh, Council Campbell and the rest of our colleagues to increase the recording fees at the Register of Deeds that would provide an increase in revenue for the CPA community. So uh, that legislation, as we know, passed uh, in December of 2019, which more than doubled the monthly revenue for the trust fund. And without that legislation, based on what's happening uh, due to COVID, um, those numbers probably would have plummeted into single digits. So just happy to report that uh, this year, Boston received 
uh, 6,181,517 trust fund distribution dollars, which is the largest in the Commonwealth. So great work uh, on behalf of all of us here at the council. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our former colleague in current Register of Deeds, uh, Steve Murphy, for working uh, with us uh, on this issue. So thank you, Madam President. Good news story that I wasn't able to get out because I was all choppy last week. Thank you so much. Not seeing any other blue hands for announcements. Let me also just thank everyone. Um, as you know, we're at the end of our legislative calendar, our last meeting. Uh, is in two weeks. So we have a meeting next week on the 9th, and then our final meeting of the calendar year is the 16th. There are no city council hearings or working sessions um, after the 16th. So we have literally a two-week window to, to finish up our legislative work for this calendar year. So I appreciate that people are winding down and not introducing new hearing orders and ordinances and things of that sort and are going to wait until uh, January as we go forward. We wanna make sure that the work that is before us, that we're getting that work done. And I'm really grateful for the commitment of all committee chairs for moving the work forward. So thank you so much. I just wanna make that clear that there aren't any hearings or working sessions scheduled after December 16th. That's according to our rules. Now, clearly, uh, counselors can continue to do their work and hold their own sessions or community forums, dialogues, et cetera, after the 16th. But in terms of a formal session of the council, it ends on the 16th. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're getting all of our work done. So I just appreciate the committee chairs and, and sponsors of, of, of certain dockets for getting this work done. Um, if there are no other announcements, we're ready to move on and close out. Not seeing any blue hands, great. We will uh, move on to our memorials. Today, we will adjourn our meeting in memory of the following individuals. For Councilor Bach, Boulevard Soto Jr. For Councilor Braden, Rob Liu. For Councilor Asabi George, Thomas D. Walsh. For Councilor Flaherty, Richard T. Smith. For Councilor O'Malley, Lorenzo Petruzzilio, and Minetta Waite. And for the chair, Jenny Chalmers and Deborah Rose Jackson. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. The chair moves when the council adjourns. It does so in memory of the aforementioned individuals. We are scheduled to meet again on Wednesday, December 9th at 12 noon for the safety of the general public and all those involved, this meeting will be held virtually and posted online. Viewers can watch the council meeting live on YouTube by visiting boston.gov slash city council TV. The council meeting today is now adjourned. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Oh yes. Aye. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good day. Aye, no. <laughs> Have a good day. Oh, God.